Um, all right. Well, first of all, it's a uh, it's a pleasure to be here on this uh, on this panel with uh, with this esteemed my esteemed colleagues who I didn't realize we were all in a murder uh, a, 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 a murder row. But I I, I hope that after this talk, um, nothing bad happens. Um, so. I'm David Moore. Uh, I want to acknowledge Rachel. Cor this, so this is a, a kind of a big collaboration. I want to acknowledge Rachel Cornfield, who is a faculty member here with us at CBITS, who's really leading this work. Uh, Joseph Williams, who's leading up the, the computer science component of this at the University of Toronto, and Teresa Wen at, at uh, uh, with uh, uh, Mental Health America. So. Um, oh. So the, the, the aim of, of this whole project is to design and develop uh, and deploy an automated personalized message, messaging system to support common mental health problems like depression and anxiety and to deploy it as a public health uh, uh, intervention. So and when I say personalized, I mean that it learns to deliver what people uh, you know, are going to respond to. So why, why are we using text messaging? Well, we've done a lot of work with apps. And one of the things that we see in the, the apps that we've developed is, is, is users are, are, are the broad, so the users you know, are most broadly you know, receptive to just the messages because they're easy. Um, they, they, they just sort of fit into the fabric of people's lives. It doesn't ask them necessarily to do anything or engage with anything. Also apps, you know, we, we know, uh, you know, engagement is a problem. So this, this is a great paper by Amit Bomel, uh, where he looked at, at the top 30 apps and found that 97% of them have an abandonment rate of 97% of in the first two weeks. Uh, the SMS app, uh, in contrast, is the most used app on a phone. Um, and it's, it's a push, uh, you know, it's a push uh, technology. So people receive it, they don't have to do anything, and it fits into the fabric of people's lives. So, um, you know, we used a, a co-design, am I missing something here? Yeah, I wanted to talk about the setting here. Um, so we're working with Mental Health America, which is the, the, uh, the largest and, and oldest uh, mental health patient advocacy organization in, our, in the country. And um, they, um, in 2014, they put uh, screeners up on their, their website, starting with depression, PHQ-9 and anxiety, and then they built that out over the years. And they've had up now, I think it's close, it's close to 10 million uh, people taking the screens. And in this past year, they've had, they've had 5 million people come in and take these screens. Um, the depression screen is the most frequently used. Uh, and, and we've looked at those data and we've seen that, that over 80% of, of the people that take that depression screen uh, are above the threshold for clinical depression. About 70% or about 70% endorse suicidal ideation. So this is this is is not is 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 is, is by no means sort of the worried well. Um, the the people visiting the site are matched the U.S. Census, so about 47% uh, identify as as a racial or ethnic minority. However, some groups are overrepresented. The LGBTQ community is overrepresented. People from low income parts of the country are 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 overrepresented. So uh, what we've done over the past year is, is, is a lot of, I'll talk a little bit about the design and the co-design process that we've used has, uh, you know, done so far two online asynchronous um, uh, uh, design groups uh, with 30, 30 young adults in each. Um, and we're starting a, a third with older adults. Um, the design workshops with uh, nine participants and then Wizard of Oz prototyping. So what we've come up with as uh, an architecture here is that we have, you know, a, a, a variety of psychological strategies that we want to deploy, behavioral activation, cognitive restructuring, gratitude, and so on. And so that we want to get the right kind of intervention, the right kind of strategy to the person, uh, a variety of different content types. So you know, we've learned that the people want to interact with the messaging in a variety of different ways. And I'll go through a few of a few of those. Then the framing of the messages, uh, you know, we need to tailor those to the individual. So, for example, uh, some people want directive messages, uh, you know, do X. Uh, other people find that a little too forceful and want more non-directive messages. And so how the message is framed, uh, you know, we want to learn and then learn the timing and the number of messages that people want. All of this is driven on the back end by, by reinforcement learning. Um, so we, 
we get some data from from MHA from their their screeners at the at, at, at baseline and ask them a few profile questions. So that sets up a profile that we can use and then update as we get more information. And then we get metrics from their engagement, like you know where we ask them to rate messages, whether they liked it or not, um, whether they've linked through to links and so on. So we pull that data in and 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 can use all of that to kind of tailor the the, the messaging strategy. So the content types, I'll go through three that we've, uh, you know, three, three examples. So prompts uh, introduce the psychological strategy. Uh, you'll see here that there are sort of links where we can link out to more information if they want more information, because text messages can't provide very much. Um, we prompt a user to try or use a skill or an activity that fits with that strategy reminders come in and then we check you know check on progress and in the blue here I won't read them but the blue here if you uh, are able to read it is uh, is kind of user feedback that we've gotten um, so this is just an ex you know sort of brief examples and the main thing that I want to point out here is that uh, you know you see here in the morning uh, then these R's here are nodes where the the the, the, re the reinforcement learning the banded algorithms are inserted to begin to try to, 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 to tailor the, the intervention. So here we have a gain frame. So behavioral activation will you know, improve your mood and the loss frame, it'll keep you from having a bad mood. So those kinds of, those kinds of framings then can get, uh, you know, get determined with those nodes. Um, stories is another kind of interaction that came out of the, uh, the user-centered design. So people wanted little short stories about uh, other people um, and they, wanted them to address common challenges that they have, uh, to connect it to the psychological strategy that they have. They wanted these, these stories to show progress, but not to minimize the amount of work involved in change. So that was, that was an important thing that came out of this design work. Um, they also wanted to be able to swap out stories. So do you like the story or not? Um, and so people, if they don't like it, they can get another one. And then reflection questions at the end to help them uh, incorporate uh, or, or understand the, the stories. And then writing was There's another thing. One minute, but don't, don't be too... Okay. I'll, doesn't, I'll, we don't do that strict about it, but yeah. Um, so writing is another thing that came out of these designs. They, they, they wanted to feel like they could give back to other people. So they wanted to be able to write messages. So for example, what would you say to motivate somebody who feels depressed? They wanted to write messages that other people could get. Um, so we you know, allow them to do that. They can have that message sent back to them at a later date or um, you know, allow us to send it to other people. And so this allows us to begin to crowdsource some of the content in this, uh, in, in this platform. Uh, and then a modular approach is just sort of giving <clears throat> bite-sized inter independent interactions. They can be launched by saying, text me. So this is sort of a smaller, uh, sort of a smaller, uh, uh, sort of a smaller interaction. So the, we've, we've field tested this now in a one week and two week programs. Uh, and and, and uh, you know, what we've seen is that for the prompts and the stories, 86% uh, of the, the participants you know, responded, gave us data back uh, uh, at least one day, you know, at least once a day. For the writing, uh, that was 79%. And for the modular, it was 83%. Um, we interviewed all of these people afterwards, uh, and 21 of them said that they would be interested in using it for a longer period of time. So not all of them, but a, a significant, you know, pretty sizable portion of these people um, were interested in using it for a longer period of time. So the next steps are that we are expanding the content. In fact, that's just about done. Uh, and then uh, at the beginning of next year, we plan to roll this out through MHA uh, to, with the, to collect, you know, to engage a minimum of 5,000 users to be able to develop the robust reinforcement learning algorithms that we want on the back end. And during that period also to continue to optimize the, and refine the content through selective um, user-centered design. So that's, uh, that's my story. One bit of shameless promotion here. We have a, a postdoctoral fellowship uh, that uh, is currently uh, taking applications. So if you or you have uh, people who are interested in that, um, please uh, visit our website. And we also have a digital mental health webinar once a month um, and, and, you know, with leaders from the, uh, from the field speaking, so you can also register for that. 
that's it. Thank you very much.